Welcome to KJV Cafe. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen. Each episode of the cafe is dedicated to studying the Bible verse by verse from Genesis through Revelation. Your host here at the cafe is Bible teacher Clark Covington. Looks like the coffee is hot and ready, so let's get started. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to the program. Welcome to Cafe. Pastor Clark Covington here with another episode of KJV Cafe, your daily Bible study podcast. That's what we aim to be, your daily Bible study podcast. Seven days a week, 15 minutes long. Get deep into the scriptures. We're not rushing. What do we have to rush for? You know, it's not like God gave us a second Bible. He gave us one Bible. We'll take our time with it. Amen. Um, it's good to have a sense of urgency in approaching God and, and, and praying to him and reading his word, but not so much so in trying to get through it. You know, there's like growing up um, and in the church, not growing up in the church, but as I was younger and I was growing up, I guess in the ministry, if you will, you would see these flyers and handouts, how to read the Bible in a month, in a year, in a week. Even in the, the Bible that I use, I think somewhere in there, there's a chart about boxes to tick off on reading the Bible in a certain amount of time. It's not that that's bad if it gets you to read the Bible, but the goal shouldn't be to accomplish. It's not like once we finish reading the Bible, we're complete. The Bible is God's living word. And as long as we're alive, we need to be in the word, studying the word. And so I've read the Bible through and through. I'd have to say many times at this point. Um, and yet there's so much more. I have to learn. There's so much more you have to learn. So we're not trying to rush through it, but rather we're trying to look at the Bible in light of what was going on then, what's going on now, and how does it relate to us personally? That's how I learned to study the Bible. And I think that's the best way to study the Bible. So we don't take anything out of context. We learn biblical history. We learn how these lessons are still applicable today. And we learn how to apply them to our lives so that we can live better for Christ. Amen. All right. So all that being said, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app. And if you want to just check in and see what we have going on, visit kjvcafe.com. And on that website, there is a menu there and it links to the truck driver's hour uh, and where you can subscribe. It's got a blog with transcriptions uh, that uh, Justine, uh, one of our fantastic um staff members, if you will, has done, looks like 23 pages and I'm going to, or 22, 22 plus pages. And there's three, six, nine. So quick math. She's probably done over 200 transcriptions. Praise the Lord. So check that out. If you haven't already, um, kjvcafe.com, you can see transcriptions of our episodes, YouTube embeds, suggestions for the podcast, links to other things to subscribe at the bottom of kjvcafe.com. You can see our Facebook page and YouTube links as well. And yes, I'm not going to go into a big thing about this, but on YouTube, so Justine is helping with the website and Irma at this time of recording is helping uh, with videos and she's, they've both been doing an excellent job and Irma will um, take these clips, these short clips and put them on YouTube and some of them though, like the exact timing of the clip, I might be animated about something. Uh, and so it's, I, I don't, I will say creating a big stir, but there's a little people get wound up and I'm like, well, if you just watch the whole message or take things in, in the context of the broader thing, it might make sense. But if you haven't already check out our YouTube and if you're on our YouTube and you're like, why are they doing so many clips? Uh, it's effective. You know, it reaches people. Um, and I think 15 minutes is short and yet, uh, 15 seconds is a lot of these, these clips online. So they're, they're, um, they're doing, I think what the Lord would have them to do. And I'm so thankful Lord has brought some people alongside to help with the, with the ministry uh, as we've grown. And <clears throat> certainly we've grown uh, over the years a little bit and uh, we're completely uh, just, you know, we're not backed by anybody and it's all God. So we're just living by faith in God, doing what he's called us to do over the years, going from more of an analog or radio ministry, <clears throat> more to online podcast and so forth. So if you haven't already, check out kjvcafe.com today. We're looking at uh, Genesis 19, um, 20, let's see where we, let me make sure I get my notes right. Yeah, 21 through 23 still. Uh, And we're going to look at, um, uh, what I'll do is I'll read these verses, we'll take a break, and then we're going to look at this idea 
of faith versus lacking faith, belief, and, and how that manifests into our actions as we live out our days here on earth. Uh, so Genesis 19, 21, and he said unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. And that's verse 23. And we can see in verse 24, if you have your Bible open, you'll see that's when the Lord rains um, fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. So uh, let's take a break and we'll get to this passage when we come back from the break. So stay tuned. You're listening to KJV Cafe. We encourage you to look us up on your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Now let's get back to some more in-depth Bible study. All right, so what's the big deal here? You know, you see this this occurrence, this cause and effect, right? That God allowed Lot to have a choice. You know, God's literally there in front of him asking him to come on, you know, to, to hurry up, to hasten. And Lot is lingering, right? And we see that, you know, uh, they're going to be consumed, right? Uh, the, the city, this, the cities of the plain for their sin. And Lot, you know, he doesn't want to go. Uh, he, he, he's told to get out of not just uh, the, the city, but the whole plain area and to go to the mountain. Genesis nineteen seventeen, And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Right? And Lot responded in the very next verse, Genesis 19, 18. Uh, and Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Right? And so he's asking to go to Zor, uh, a city that he said is not too sinful or not too big, one of the two or both. And he's saying, that's not a big thing for you guys, right? And they let him go, even though he gets afraid for his life in Zor, and he ends up in the mountains anyways. So he ends up doing what God had asked him to do anyways. And in the midst of, of just arguing with God, of unbelief, of being disagreeable, of not having faith, whatever you want to call it, he made life so much more hard for himself, right? And when bad things happen in Zor, okay, when all of a sudden his daughters are thinking they're the only humans on earth and they're going to have to essentially, uh, you know, rape his, their dad, why are they doing that? Because uh, I believe they had gone to Zor. I think that it would have been more suitable if they hadn't done that. Or if mom hadn't looked back on Sodom and turned into a pillar of salt. I mean, you have all of these incidences where these free choices are leading to bad choices, which are leading to consequences, which is leading to life way harder than it needs to be, right? And that is something that um, I know a little about, you know, I've made poor choices growing up. Uh, I was on, on my own pretty much at a very young age in the sense that I had liberty to do what I wanted. And, I, you know, give a 15 year old liberty to do what he wants and he's going to make uh, poor decisions. And that's no excuse. I mean, certainly a 15 year old doesn't make a lot of the poor decisions I made. But and then at, at 25, I was still making very poor decisions 10 years later because hard uh, headed, stubborn, stiff necked, whatever you want to call it. And I remember I'd have these conversations with family and they'd be like, man, your life is harder than it needs to be. Your decisions are making life more difficult than it needs to be. I completely agree with that assessment at that time. And looking back on it now, you know, you see that in hindsight at 44, you know, you see, you look back 20 years, say, yeah, that was pretty dumb at 24. Okay. So the point is that when we, have a measure of faith, when we accept Christ as Savior, we can stop relying on ourselves in which we often make poor decisions. And we now can rely on God, right? And in which his ways are perfect. And so this picture of the angels approaching Lot, which is a true historical story, right? Narrative, fact, however you want to put it, uh, is the same as how we could go to God in prayer. And through prayer, the Lord could work, work in our hearts to give us that command to go to the mountain. And instead of us going to this little sinful city, we go and listen to the Lord and go to the mountain. And I, I know you may not be headed for a mountain or a city, but you get the idea. Like instead of going where we want to go, where intellectually it makes sense, where logically, where in the world it could make sense, 
We do what God calls it. I mean, the irony here, Lot didn't want to go to the mountain because he was afraid. So he goes to Zor and he becomes afraid in Zor. And then he ends up in the mountain. That's very ironic. And then the bad thing that he was afraid of happened in the mountain because he was afraid and went to Zor. And then that was bad, right? You follow all of this. And here's a better example, like Abraham. You know, is Abraham in Sodom? No. Is he in danger of this fire? No. Did God have to tell Abraham to uh, pack up his tent and his people? No. So by Abraham simply being justified by faith, simply having faith, Abraham is not a party to any of this chaos, to any of this um, uh, uh, detriment or death, right? The fact that Lot lost his sons-in-laws, uh, his daughters lost their husbands. Lot lost his wife. His daughters lost their mom. You know, Abraham would have Sarah. Sarah didn't get turned into a pillar of salt. Sarah didn't die. All of these things that happened, I know Sarah eventually died, but not there. All these things that happened were a result of these sinful choices that Lot has made over and over again. If you want to take it a step further, Abraham being justified by faith, being apart from Lot in that regard, rescues Lot from the Sodomites is used by God. Him and his men take on actual federal armies, if you will. Him and his trained men. So Abraham is used by God. Matter of fact, on the way back, what happens? Abraham is affirmed by Melchizedek, by God. He encounters a picture of God on the way home. So when we live for God, not only are we not party to all of the consequences that, that the sinful choices bring about, but we actually are used by God to rectify some of these sinful choices others are making. I mean, it's incredibly deep, the picture that God paints for us in Genesis 19, thus why we're spending so much time in 16, 17, 18, 19, and so forth, because there's a really, really good picture of being justified by faith, living for God, the fruit of living for God. You know, we had a little family service this morning, um, and we're talking about this idea of you don't always see the reward of your faith in this life, right? Like you, you know, let's say you have great faith, okay? And you're like that widow with two mites and you put money into the box, so to speak. You know, you give to, to some situation that you know needs giving, okay? And you do it in Jesus' name. You do it for the love of the Lord. And you got bills to pay and so forth. You do that out of faith. And maybe somehow that bill does get taken care of that you were worried about. But it's not like all of a sudden you've got this, you know, great grand um, fortune coming your way in this life. And you have all of these blessings. And, you know, sometimes we don't see the blessing like Abraham. You don't really see the blessing until the other side, right? In heaven. And I can say that truly because what happens with the rich man and Lazarus, you got the beggar outside and the rich man won't give him a thing and the rich man dies and the beggar's in what? Abraham's bosom in, in paradise. He's in Abraham's bosom and the rich man's saying, please tell Lazarus to bring me something. And Abraham says, you can't do it, you know? So Abraham at that point, we understand through biblical text, has a understanding of the heavenlies, has a knowledge now and a position now in heaven. We see that in the Bible. It's incredible. And so Abraham surely then understood what maybe he didn't see by having to live in faith that he'd have the promised child and so forth about all the reward that came from simply having faith. And see, we're justified by faith, not by anything else. And certainly not, we're not justified by trying to outfox God, outsmart God, debate with God, be, how about belligerent or disobedient to God? Can you imagine the angels? Like, they're doing Lot a favor by getting him out. You know, we always talk about Lot being righteous, and the Bible does say that. But a lot of this, I think, falls truly on the fact that Lot was Abraham's nephew. And this was a, a, a deal where Abraham was found faithful in the sight of God, and Lot's brought out, Okay. So yes, I know the Bible says Lot's righteous, but we sometimes it's hard to see here. They're, he's arguing with the angels. And yet here we are today, God may be calling us to do something and we're disputing with him and we're backsliding all these other things. We need to turn to God in faith, trust him and be bold in our faith and we'll be, be blessed and safe for it. More on this on the next episode. Tune in next time. Thank you for listening. Take care. God bless and amen. Thanks for spending time with us today at the cafe. We would love to hear from you. You can email Brother Clark directly at clark at enduringpromise.org. 
See you again tomorrow. Same time, same place.